in India in 2012, there's been quite a bit of debate as to how much additional competition to allow from foreign retailers. Let's look at some of the economics of this issue. A lot of the debate has centered around Walmart, the American retailer, but also Carrefour, Ikea, and other foreign suppliers. Such companies already have the right to sell wholesale in India, and as of 2012, they received greater privileges to sell retail in India from the federal government, but the state-level government still can impose significant restrictions. Perhaps by the time you're hearing this video, there have been further developments yet. Walmart has a motto, which is, always lower prices. The company doesn't literally always charge lower prices, but it takes advantage of high levels of productivity and high economies of scale, and it can be quite a fierce competitor. This is what's good about the company, but it's also part of what's unpopular about the company, namely that its competitors don't like having to compete with the lower prices. The main disadvantage of a greater Walmart presence in India would be that many Indian small merchants would be put out of business. This would also mean hardship for them. It would mean a higher level of unemployment and, in general, some amount of economic disruption. On the other side of the ledger are significant benefits. These include lower prices for customers and also higher and more regular payments for suppliers, including farmers. For instance, imagine that it's Walmart selling groceries. Well, that means Walmart will be buying more from Indian farmers. It's a mistake to think that the only beneficiaries of greater retail competition are foreign investors. A lot of the beneficiaries would be Indians, especially poorer Indians and Indians with limited incomes. Other benefits would be that larger and foreign firms are often more productive. And also, this is important, there are often productivity spillovers to Indian firms from watching Walmart, learning from Walmart, perhaps having employees who worked for Walmart, and then take their knowledge back to the Indian firms. Walmart has been successful in Mexico, and this also has led to some broader productivity improvements in that country. These improvements include improved systems for trucking, which have benefited other companies and sectors also, development of centralized warehouses, greater standardized procedures for shipping and delivery, and also better practices of labor management. In all of these regards, Walmart has helped to upgrade some other parts of the Mexican economy. In this situation, when there's greater competition in retailing, economists tend to believe that the benefits from the greater competition will exceed the costs. One reason they believe this is called the theory of comparative advantage, and this is outlined in detail in two videos in our section on trade, and I will refer you to those. There is also what economists call the theory of public choice, and this says that even if there might exist some ideal government policy to restrict trade with foreign retailers, it's unlikely that a government will actually pursue that ideal policy. Instead, domestic governments tend to pursue policies which are too restrictive or give too much advantage to domestic businesses or special lobbies or to pursue restrictive trade policies which are in some way too corrupt and in fact are not ideal or optimal. When you put together the theory of comparative advantage and also the theory of public choice, in general most economists favor greater allowance of retail competition including from foreign investors. An interesting question is to ask how much will Walmart and indeed other foreign retailers actually dominate the Indian economy? The answer is not obvious. In a lot of other foreign markets, Walmart hasn't always dominated at all, and in some other countries it's had to leave because it wasn't profitable enough. The developing nation where Walmart probably has done best is Mexico, and that country as a developing nation is one which is relatively similar to the economy of the United States. Some particular problems which Walmart faces and will face in India include very complicated labor laws, including at the state level, a very tough-to-manage infrastructure, which make the speedy delivery practices of Walmart difficult to pull off, uh, just in general very different consumer expectations, which maybe Walmart is not in the best position to understand, and also the reality that Walmart must deal with a higher level of corruption.
Of course, to the extent that Walmart does not succeed in India, both the costs and benefits of Walmart market entry would be lower. There's plenty to read on this topic. For one very short introduction, see in India Inc. the article, Can Walmart Build a Nation? For a more academic treatment of foreign direct investment, you might read this piece, which is available online. Also use Google, trying the keywords offered in this section. And for the very latest news, type those keywords into news.google.com.